This is an extract from the Leader podcast by The Evening Standard, hosted by me, David Marsland. To hear the whole thing, search for us on your podcast provider. Hurricane Laura hit Louisiana with 150 mile per hour winds this morning, the strongest storm seen in the US for more than a century. As the day's gone on, it's been downgraded from a Category 4 to a Category 2, but the danger to property and life continues. It's expected the storm centre will stay at hurricane strength as it passes through northwestern Louisiana. Well, Jeff Palermo, who's the news director at the Louisiana Radio Network, is with me. And first of all, Jeff, how are you holding up through this? Well, I'm in uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, which is about uh, a little over two hours west of Lake Charles, which is basically uh, ground zero for Hurricane uh, Laura. So southwest Louisiana where, is where we're seeing, obviously, the uh, most extensive damage. How bad is that damage, Jeff? What kind of reports are you getting? Well, uh, there's good news and bad news. Uh, I guess let's maybe start off with the bad news. The structural damage is quite severe. I mean, we had maximum sustained winds of 150 miles per hour when the hurricane made landfall around one o'clock this morning in southwest Louisiana. I mean, that's one of the uh, highest recorded wind speeds for a hurricane when making landfall. I mean, we've seen some category five hurricanes in the Gulf of Mexico but a uh, Category 4 making uh, landfall is uh, quite rare. In, uh, you, a lot of times you see these storms um, lose a little bit of strength as they approach the coastline, but uh, Hurricane Laura was quite different in that. It, it kept gaining strength as it was approaching Louisiana's coastline. So it was a powerful storm. Uh, Lake Charles is the biggest city that is right there. The parish, or where we call them counties, there's about 200,000 people that live there that uh, were asked to evacuate. Uh, and they had uh, in excess of uh, over 100 mile per hour winds for at least a couple of hours today, so or early this morning. So uh, I've spoken with someone there at the scene, and they tell me the downtown area, every building has some sort of structural damage. There's casinos there, and uh, part of the roof uh, blew off a casino. We do have a fatality as well. Um, I would say about 35, 40 miles north of Lake Charles uh, in a rural area of Louisiana, a tree fell down on a home killing a 14-year-old girl. Now, I told you there was some good news. Heading into this storm, the, the warnings were very dire. The National Hurricane Center had talked about a storm surge of 20 feet and that water would... Um, make it all the way uh, 40 miles inland from the uh, Gulf of Mexico. The storm surge did not get to uh, 20 feet. It was more like 10, 12 feet is the most we're hearing. The governor has said about half of that. So that's good. Um, I mean, there's still going to be some areas that are flooded in low-lying areas, but I don't think we're going to see the extensive flooding that we were anticipating with this storm. But the cleanup uh, from all the structural damage will take weeks, if not months, to repair. Did people leave the area ahead of the storm, or did they decide, I'm I'm going to stay through this and see if we can get through this? There's always those brave souls out there that uh, decide to uh, test Mother Nature and see if they can wait it out. And and yes, there, there, there were a few people. But this same part of the state got hit with a massive hurricane uh, 15 years ago on the heels of Hurricane Katrina. And many people in that area remember Hurricane Rita and just how devastating that storm was. So I think a good percentage, uh, I think about 80, 85% of the people, uh, and who knows, maybe even 90% got out of Dodge. Uh, They got out of there. um, And that's a good thing because they they probably saved their lives. Uh, The biggest concern was the flooding. With uh, hurricanes, you know you're going to get the wind damage. Uh, That's common. But Will you see uh, the, the massive flooding that we've seen with some hurricanes? Because that's when you end up possibly getting stranded. And uh, as um, the National Hurricane Center out of Miami had told us, the storm surge we were in, anticipating was unsurvivable. That if, if, if the water came crashing in and came up to your roof, there was no way you were going to be able to escape it. It looks like we didn't have that to the degree that we were anticipating. Maybe some homes were saved that way, but still, uh, there's a lot of roofs, a lot of trees down, a lot of damage. But yeah, I I think a lot of people here in Louisiana are certainly wary of storms. And uh, it's good that they they listened to local officials and decided to evacuate. Now, as I understand it, 
it's not going away anytime soon and the eye of the storm, the centre of the storm is going to remain at hurricane level. As it passes northwest Louisiana, are people worried about how it's going to hit those areas too? Yeah, certainly. There is a good thing with this as well, though. Uh, the, the track that it's taking is a, a lot of rural areas, uh, actually some beautiful parts of, of our country. Toledo Bend, which is one of the bass fishing lakes uh, in the country, the, the uh, hurricane's going right over that right now. So some very rural areas. We're not looking at heavily populated areas. Uh, the, the next city that's uh, really heavily populated is Shreveport, and they're not accustomed to getting hurricane force winds in their neck of the woods. Um, so they're about ready to get uh, what looks to be a category one storm to hit them. Oh, probably in the next couple hours, they're already starting to feel effects of it. Um, but so yeah, we're, we're looking at some damage. Uh, I, I think in Louisiana, last time I looked, uh, over 300,000 people are without power. And again, to me, that's always one of the biggest stories with the hurricanes is that, uh, you know, the TV guys always love getting that coverage of being there on the coast when the hurricane comes in. And, and that's fun and all, and that's, that's interesting to watch. But how society reacts to not having power, <laughs> not having internet, not having air conditioning in 90 degree heat, that to me is always the real story of a hurricane. And there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be battling that uh, for the rest of this week and into next week and, uh, you know, into September as well. Historically for Louisiana, it always seems like the last week of August is when we get our major hurricane. And again, that has happened. Uh, the 15th year anniversary of Hur Hurricane Katrina is this weekend. And usually we can never really do any kind of anniversary or uh, memorial type things because we're preparing for a hurricane or we're recovering from a hurricane. It's interesting that if we're going to get a big storm during the hurricane season, it's going to come the last week of August. And that's what happened again here this time.